So this lecture discusses the status of bees in the world today and the reasons why bees are in decline. Now the lecture is taken from my course Background to Beekeeping Start with Why and you can access the resource links that go with the lecture as part of the course preview and that's a free preview. So please click the link below to take you to the course. Thank you very much and enjoy the lecture. Hi there and welcome to lecture three, the status of bees. Well, you might have heard that bees around the world are dying. Well, the question is, you know, is that true and why does it matter? Well, in this lecture, we're going to look at the status of bees around the world and why it's essential that we take care of our bees. And by the end of the lecture, you're going to have a good overview of the status of bees around the world and why we need to look after bees. Now, the state of bee health the reality is that bees are threatened and there are far fewer bees around than there were. It's not just honeybees, but all bees that are threatened. So when we're talking about bees, we're talking about bees in general, whether they're honeybees or not, because all bees are very important. There has been a decline in pollinators and this is a global trend. A recent major global assessment suggested that about 40% of invertebrate pollinator species such as bees and butterflies, are facing extinction, which is really, really frightening. Bees are an indicator of the general health of our environment. So if bees are dying, it means there's something wrong, something seriously wrong with our environment. So bees are under threat. I'll just give you an example from Ireland. Uh, according to Biodiversity Ireland, 30 percent of the 101 bee species in Ireland are threatened with extinction. And Ireland is a country that's known for its greenness and uh, its natural environment. And we still have a problem of 30% of the bee species threatened with extinction, which is shocking. Six species are critically endangered in Ireland, 10 are endangered and 14 species are vulnerable. Two species of bees, unfortunately, have become extinct in Ireland within the last 80 years. And again, this is an Ireland, uh, this is a country that's considered a green country, you know, a, a healthy, natural environment. And it is, but big changes in the landscape have resulted in the decline of bees. And I'll, I'll just mention about that as we go along. The same situation in the UK, bees are under threat. In the United Kingdom, there are about 250 bees, bee species. There are 24 species of bumblebee, 225 species of solitary bee, and like in Ireland, just a single honeybee species. And just like in Ireland, sadly, bees are under threat. Since 1900, they have lost around 20 species of bee in the UK alone, and a further 35 are at risk. Now, the reasons for the decline of bees are due to the loss of habitat, climate change and the intensification of agriculture, including the use of noxious sprays such as neonicotinoids, which have been shown to have a detrimental effect on bees. So it's a whole combination of factors that's affecting bees. But in particular, uh, that change of habitat, the intensification of farming. Of course, farming is uh, the biggest uh, activity in the countryside. And when you have what were once meadows which were rich in wildflowers they've been they've been plowed up and they've been replanted with perennial ryegrass hybrid uh, grass varieties which are really to produce grass for livestock feed and when you look out and you see a field of green yes it's beautiful but then there is something missing all those beautiful wildflowers that used to be there as part of the meadows they're gone and unfortunately then there's nothing for the bees to feed on because bees feed on nectar and pollen. And if there are no flowers, then there's no food for bees. So I've heard it described as green concrete. Green concrete. You look out from a bee perspective, there's nothing to eat. So that's a huge issue, of course. The destruction of things like hedgerows where bees nest, again, is another factor. Again, hedgerows provide uh, bee forage, you know, nectar and pollen from flowers. They're being removed. You have um, larger fields. Issues like climate change, of course, is uh, affecting, you know, maybe the plant species and things like neonicotinoids, the use of sprays uh, which are detrimental or which kill bees. And neonicotinoids have been proven to 
have a detrimental effect on bees and we have a ban on certain neonicotinoids in the European Union. So bees are under threat also in North America. A recent report by the Center for Biological Diversity showed that more than 700 North American bee species are headed towards extinction. Again, this is very sad, it's very worrying. In 2016, seven species of yellow-faced bees native to Hawaii were put on the endangered list. And in 2017, there's a bumblebee called the rusty-patched bumblebee, Bombus aphanus, was listed as an endangered species, species, becoming the first wild bee in the continental United States to gain such federal protection. And that's a picture of the rusty patched bumblebee again. Every bee that I show you is absolutely amazing, absolutely beautiful. Another thing that has come up, and this now relates to honeybees in particular, is colony collapse disorder. And since 2003 there have been reports in America and in Europe of serious losses of bees from beehives. And in 2006 the term colony collapse disorder, CCD, was first used to describe this phenomenon. Now CCD is characterized by the rapid loss of, uh, from a colony of its adult bee population and no dead adult bees are found inside or close in close proximity to the colony. In other words, you go, you open the hive and there's virtually no bees, there's no sign of dead bees. It means that they've all died out somewhere, way, well away from the hive. So it was a very strange phenomenon and it has been intensively researched what is causing CCD. Now, suggested causes are increased losses due to the invasion of varroa mite. Now this particular mite is a parasitic mite of bees. It's a dreadful uh, parasite. It gets onto the bees, it sucks their blood, it goes into the brood or the that where the bees are are pupating or changing into an adult bee and it it sucks the blood of the pupating bee so it weakens the bees it also spreads viruses so it's really a very nasty pest and newer emerging diseases such as the Israeli acute paralysis viruses and gut the gut parasite nosema so these are other related causes of CCD we have pesticide poisoning. I mentioned neonicotinoids, um, pesticides, which have been shown to have a detrimental effect on bees. We have stress that bees are experiencing due to management practices, such as the transportation to multiple locations. Now, it, that wouldn't apply to all situations, but for example, in the US, you have um, large scale movement of bees on trucks for pollination purposes, and that also, that kind of intensive management is going to stress bee colonies. You also have changes in habitat where bees forage. Um, I mentioned that about the destruction of you know, hedgerows, the removal of uh, wildflower meadows, reseeding with uh, hybrid grass varieties. You end up with green concrete, there's less forage available, less variety of forage. Um, that results in inadequate forage, poor nutrition and potential immune suppressing stress on bees caused by one or a combination of factors identified above. So it's all of these factors acting together which could potentially cause CCD. And one, the one, I suppose, outcome of CCD has been to really create awareness amongst the general public about the importance of bees and looking after bees. There have been quite a number of movies made about CCD and about losses of bee colonies and, and the impact of that. And I, I'll put links to those movies you can watch on CCD. So the good thing is, you know, the one positive that has come out of CCD is the increased awareness of bees and the value of bees to the world and to, to humanity. This is a picture of a varroa mite on the back of a bee. Can you see the varroa mite? Yes, it's that, this red thing here. That's a varroa mite and that's probably, this is an adult varroa mite. It's probably hitching a lift from the bee. Um, you also find varroa mites here, down in the abdominal area here, the abdomen, uh, stuck between the plates in the abdomen. Again, feeding, sucking the blood of the bee. 
and primarily you also find them in the cells where if you uncap some cells within the, the, the brood comb you'll find mites inside sucking the blood of the pupating bees when they're changing from the larval stage to the adult stage they go through a pupil stage and you find them in the cells there so why do we need healthy bees well the a big thing is pollination and this is the transfer of pollen between the male and female parts of flowers to enable fertilization and reproduction so pollen carries the male genetic information and that is transferred to the female part of the flower so bees are very important to transfer that pollen from one flower to the next to enable that fertilization and reproduction. Now, according to this major report, the production, yield and quality of more than three quarters of the leading global food crops occupying 33 to 35% of all agricultural land benefit from animal pollination. Now, bees would be a big part of animal pollination. There are some other for example birds um, you know which are beetles and others which are important in pollination or, or, or contribute to pollination however bees are the most important in terms of poll animal pollination so worldwide the contribution of bees and other insects to global crop production for human food is valued at 190 billion Okay, and this is the IPBES 2016 report. I'm going to put a link to that report. You'll be able to download it for free. And it talks all about the value of pollination. Plants need bees. A study done by Gervasi et al. 2017 demonstrated the decline of bees threatens the evolution of plants. And in the experiment, you had field mustard plants pollinated by bumblebees. They ended up being taller and more scented than those pollinated by hoverflies, which are less efficient pollinators. So in other words, the plants changed in, in response to having less bees around. And they switched over to self-pollination. And when you have self-pollination, you don't have that exchange of genetic material between one plant and another. So that's going to threaten the evolution of plants. So we need bees to have healthy plants. That's what this um, piece of research is showing. So in summary then, bees are under threat and in decline worldwide. The causes of this decline are habitat loss, disease and pesticides. And bees are essential because they pollinate our food crops and wild plants. And bees contribute to a healthy habitat with healthy plants. And also, don't forget, bees are beautiful. Okay, in the next lecture then, we're going to discuss what each of us can do to help bees, which are in decline as we've seen worldwide. So see you in the next lecture.